Hey guys, I'm Chris Smith. Welcome to Out of Chicago. Next week we are headed to Acadia National Park for our Out of Acadia Landscape Photography Conference and I'm going to show you everything I'm packing to bring. Uh, this is going to be everything that you might need for, you know, five days away uh, shooting landscape photography. So we're going to go through my bag. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I'm going to put in my check luggage. Uh, everything that you'll need as a photographer going out to do some landscape photography. So let's get to it. First off, the bag itself. Uh, it is the Low Pro Flip Side Trek. 450. This is the biggest version they make. I also have a 350, but besides those two bags, I've sold all of my other backpacks and this is all I have left. I've always loved these flip side uh, packs where you access your gear from the back. You can have it on and have the pack in front of you. Works great. So first thing, guess what? I'm going to bring my camera. It's the Fuji X-T2 and on it right now I have the Fujifilm 18 to 135 lens. This is a great all-purpose lens for shooting all the way from wide, 27 millimeter equivalent, all the way to 200 millimeter equivalent. It's very sharp, it's weather sealed, which is gonna be great in Acadia. It's everything you might need for a landscape photography lens, except if you need to go wider. And so I'll also be bringing the Fuji 10 to 24 millimeter lens. And this one is not weather sealed, so I think if it's in the rain, I think I'm gonna be leaving this on there because X-T2 is weather sealed along with this lens. But there are gonna be a lot of times where uh, we're gonna be using this wide angle, getting really close to foreground rocks, uh, whatever it may be, grasses. And this is gonna be uh, one of the lenses. I, I probably use this about 49% of the time, this about 49% of the time, and that leaves me with a couple percentage <laughs> points left for the Rokinon 12 millimeter f2 lens and the Rokinon 8 millimeter fisheye lens. So when we're shooting night skies and I need to have that faster aperture and I don't need to have any autofocus, these are both manual focus lenses, these are going to be perfect. I recommend if you're looking for a lens to shoot night photography, you want to shoot the Milky Way, you want to shoot the stars, I recommend that you go to LonelySpec.com. The site is run by photographer Ian Norman. He gives a rundown of every single camera system and the lenses that work best for it for Milky Way photography. So if you're going on a night photography hike, excursion, you want to make sure that you have the right lenses for it. If you have like an F4 lens, you know, you're going to have to shoot a super high ISO to be able to get those stars. So get yourself a lens that's meant for that. Go to LonelySpec.com. That should help you out. All right, what else do we got in here? Uh, let's see. Well, one other lens type thing is, oh boy, an extension tube. This is the Fujifilm MCEX 16 and so this is going to allow me to shoot closer to things. I'm not bringing a dedicated macro lens. I'm going to be using this along with the 18 to 135. Gets really close. It's not quite one to one magnification, but it's really good. So you don't need to carry an entire extra lens with you. You can bring the extension tube. You'll get as close as you need for, uh, for most of what we might do in Acadia. I've also got my filter bag and the filter bag has every one of my filters that I'm going to use in here. I've got a polarizer. I've got, well, I've got a polarizing filter for both of these lenses. So I think it's a 72 and a 67 millimeter um, filter size. I also have an ND filter, a three stop ND filter. So if, if we're gonna shoot some waterfalls, that's gonna be nice during the middle of the day to slow it down a few stops. I also have, in case we wanna shoot during the day and get really, really long exposures, I have a nine stop ND filter, which I'll use as well. And I also have a step down ring, step up ring, so that I can put that larger filter onto the smaller lens. So I, for the ND filters, I got the larger ones, use the step up ring step up to a higher filter um, and, and I'll use that as well. The last thing is uh, this little guy. It's a little rubbery thing. It's probably used for opening 
pickle jars, but if one of your filters gets stuck on the front of a lens, especially because we're shooting near a lot of salt water, this is really handy to have to help you get a good grip on the filter and screw it off the front of your lens. This little case itself, uh, it's an old Tamrac bag and it's served me well for a really long time. It's got all these sleeves inside of here and I put a different filter in each one and that whole thing goes right in the slot in my bag. Works great. Also in here I have a first aid kit. Don't always bring this when I shoot, but when I go on a longer trip and I know I'll be going on hikes where I may be uh, hiking quite a, way, quite a ways, bring a first aid kit. When I know I'm gonna be near water, it's nice to have this one that uh, is sealed and you roll it down so that no water can get inside of this. And it's got your typical band-aids, gauze, ointment, whatever. Uh, if you have some minor scrapes, bruises, whatever, this uh, first aid kit may come in handy. And the other people in your group that you're shooting with may love you for it too. Couple other things that I've slid right in here. It is the Platypod Ultra. You can take the ball head off your normal tripod, put it right onto this Platypod and be shooting flat off of the ground. And so I'll be doing some of that. I pretty much just leave this in my bag all the time because if I have my tripod, which I almost always do, then I could take that ball head off, put it on here and you're good to go. The other thing that may come in handy in Acadia that goes along with that are the little spikes. The spikes uh, screw through here, so if you're on uneven terrain, those spikes will go in and uh, make it so you can level it however you like. And those slide just right in between uh, the dividers that I have in there. I've got extra cards. You want to make sure that you leave on your trip with enough extra memory cards. When you're going to leave, when you have everything all set, I always tell myself, clean my cards, charge the batteries, make sure you leave with all of your batteries full and make sure that all of your memory cards are clean, right? Nothing worse than getting to a spot and you go to start shooting and you take a few pictures and then you realize, oh, hey, I had uh, all my shots from my last trip on here and now there's no easy way to go back and just format the card. You've been shooting for 10, 15 minutes. So before you leave on this trip, make sure you have all these cards clean. Get them on your computer. You gotta make sure you've got water when you're going on a hike. Uh, nice, out of Chicago. Uh, you uh, need to have, uh, I mentioned cards and batteries. You wanna have all your fresh batteries. Uh, I keep mine here in these little pouches that come around the front. So with the Fuji system, you need to make sure you have a few extras. If you're shooting at night, it's probably gonna get cold. So make sure you have extra batteries for when it gets cold. Now at our event in Acadia, of course, uh, Gary Farber and Hunts will be there uh, with an assortment of batteries, cards, cameras, lenses, filters, tripods, everything you might possibly need uh, for this landscape week. But um, yeah, make sure you have all this stuff ahead of time. But if you forget something or you use more cards than you think or you didn't realize you're going to need another extra battery, he'll be there. He'll have all that stuff for you. All right, and then I jammed a whole bunch of great stuff into the top of this bag. Uh, I'm gonna be shooting some video, so I've got my GoPro. You always wanna make sure you have snacks, so I have snacks as well. One of the things that I love about the Fuji X-T2 is you can shoot up to a 30 minute long exposure with the newest firmware update. You can shoot up to 30 minutes without the need of an external trigger like this, and I don't even know that I'll bring this. Maybe if I want to go and shoot like star trails or something, maybe just throw it in, but I'm going to use this. But if you can't shoot more than 30 seconds without a cable release, you want to make sure you bring a cable release with you. And like I said, we're shooting at night. Make sure you have a flashlight. So in my case, I have, a, it's called like a Zipka Plus. I've had this for three, four years, and I love it because it doesn't have the extra headband. It just zips out like this. That's all there is to it. Here, here we go, watch this. And there we go, and that too. Pretty nice, so I keep that in my bag all the time. Uh, when you're shooting at night, this comes in handy. You can put it on a red light sensor as well, and that way you're not gonna ruin the night vision of yourself or the people around you. So make sure you have some sort of a flashlight too. I also have in here chapstick, 
medicine. I got the first aid kit, but I don't know, migraine medicine, ibuprofen, that kind of stuff. Uh, whatever it is that you need uh, when you're out there and you know what you may be prone to, make sure that you have it in your camera bag. And this may be the last thing, but, oh, and I didn't mention this, that on my camera, I will always make sure that I have an L plate on here. So whether um, it was my Canon 5D Mark III or 6D or whatever, I've always owned the L plate that goes with that camera. So on the X-T2, I've got the L plate, but if for some reason it comes loose, uh, make sure you have an, an Allen wrench that goes with it so you can tighten that back up. I always make sure that I have my lens hoods. I basically just leave them on all the time. I pretty much just leave them on and leave them uh, in the proper direction all the time. Gosh, is there anything more annoying than seeing people shooting like this? I mean, why? What's the, oh my goodness. Yeah, you got a lens hood on there. Use it properly. Lens hoods uh, help you protect from light hitting the, the front element that you don't want hitting it. Uh, causing flare and they also help you protect the front element of your lens. So I always leave my lens hoods on. Uh, same thing with this one uh, and this guy's retracted. We're going to be shooting near water. You're going to want to have microfiber claws. Here's a nice one that comes in a little pouch. Uh, wipe the front of your uh, lenses with that. You do not want, uh, well, you don't want to be shooting with water on your front element. You're going to need to wipe that off business cards, right? You're always, always networking, always meeting new people. So make sure you have your business cards so people can get in touch with you after you're shooting. Also in this front cover, I have from Colleen McSperry photographing Acadia National Park. It's an invaluable guide. She's our opening speaker that first night. Gary will have these available for sale. Uh, it's got everything you might need from all the different locations to tips for shooting, how to get there. Um, if you're going to Acadia National Park, that's one of the books to get. The other one is from one of our other speakers, Michael Hudson has written The Photographer's Guide to Acadia. So between these two, you're gonna find all the best spots. You're gonna know when to go there, everything you need. So if you're getting on the plane, headed to Acadia, go ahead and grab the ebook for The Photographer's Guide to Acadia by Michael Hudson. One of the most important things that you'll bring is your tripod. So you'll be using this pretty much all the time. Maybe for some of the flowers, if you're gonna shoot some of that, you won't need it, but most of the time you'll be using your tripod. I don't think this is the time to skimp and bring your travel tripod. I know we're traveling, but I think this is the time to bring your full-size tripod. I have a Faisal Carbon CT3442 tournament. I don't know, I haven't entered any tournaments with it yet, but uh, maybe I should. Uh, I also have the Arca Swiss uh, Z ball head with uh, really right stuff clamp uh, on the top of it. So this is what I'll be bringing. Now when I bring this thing, I'm gonna put it in my checked luggage with all of my clothes. And to do that, I think the best way is to actually take the ball head off of here. I'm going to most likely put this inside of one of my wool socks and uh, put that in there, try and protect it a little bit. And then I'm gonna put this in there as well and probably roll up some shirts or whatever and put them in here. And that's gonna all go in my check luggage. Now, one of the very most important things that I bring on any trip is this and I call it this is a mess I call it the octopus <laughs> basically what it is it's a USB uh, hub charger I've got all these USB cables hooked to it you can plug in all these different USB cables like a charger for your phone uh, and, and this all just plugs into the wall so you just need one outlet plug that in, there it is plugged in, and now I can charge all these things all at once. So I have a charger for my camera batteries, I have one for the GoPro batteries, I have one for my phone, I have one for my iPad, I have one for the next thing on the list, which is a portable external battery. Uh, it's just like the little tiny ones that you might find to charge your phone, but this one is, it's gonna hold a lot more and it's got two ports here. So 
Uh, I'll keep this with me when I go out. If my phone dies, if, um, well, I could even plug in the uh, charger for my camera batteries, all sorts of things. Or, or actually, if you have the right adapter, uh, this can go directly to the camera and charge on um, right off of this. And I'll have this all the time. So all those things plug into the octopus, and I counted there's only uh, seven wires coming off of these, but you know, good enough, it's an octopus. <laughs> and so uh, I'll bring that whole thing. And what I do is when, when I'm at home, this is plugged into the wall in my office, and I got all this coming out of it. When I'm ready to take a trip, I just unplug one thing, grab all this, and put it in with my clothes with my uh, check luggage. That's what I recommend, something like this. I'll put links to all of these things in the description to the video. All right, how about backing up your stuff, backing up your photos? Uh, you may even use more memory than you have cards for, which I don't recommend, but I do recommend that you find a way to back stuff up. So, although this is a lot to bring, I think it is the best way and the easiest way, easiest system to back all your stuff up, and that is to bring your laptop, which you might want to use as well when, uh, you know, help, you know, edit stuff as you're going. You also, if you're coming to our Acadia event, uh, we'll have instructors helping you with your post-processing. So this is going to be invaluable. So you can actually be working on Lightroom, Photoshop, or whatever system you use. Don't forget your charger to go with it. And to me, the most important thing when I'm traveling is that I bring an external hard drive. So I've got the external hard drive in this case. Uh, it's a, like a mini hard drive and I have the cable so I can connect it to here. So all you need to do, now this has an SD card reader built in. If you don't have one built in, make sure you have, bring a card reader as well. And so all I'll do is at the end of every night, I'm gonna take the cards that I've used, I'm gonna put all of those images straight onto here, and I'm gonna put them onto here using Lightroom, put them all, all my Acadia photos from the week, all into one Lightroom catalog, and back them up, and I'm going to leave them on my cards so that I have them in two different places. And then, when I get home, I'm simply going to take this, plug it into my computer, this will have the Lightroom catalog and all the images on it, plug it into my desktop at home, and I'll use Lightroom to import the catalog from here onto my desktop, and it's done. And that's it, super easy. And then once I know I have them on there and I got that whole backup system going, then I can clear out my cards and uh, I'll probably leave them on here as well too for a little while until I need more room. But that to me is the easiest way when you're taking a big trip to back up all of your photos and you also get to edit them while you're doing it. Oh man, I don't know about this for Acadia. I saw weather report might be getting down into the 50s and even a little lower. So I'm gonna bring hat, gloves, and maybe some of these hand warmers as well, just in case if we're out shooting late into the night, it's gonna get chilly. So, so I will have a hat, I will have gloves, uh, and as far as the clothes, make sure you're layered up. So bring like a rain jacket, have a fleece, sweatshirts, uh, short sleeve shirt, long sleeve shirts, and just be prepared to um, you know, add takeaway layers as you go. One other thing I'm gonna do before I pack everything up is with all of my clothes, I'm gonna spray them with this product I've been using for a while, Permethrin. It is insect repellent. And basically, you go out on the patio, lay out all your clothes that you're taking, you spray them all down with this, let it sit for a while, and then roll things up, pack them up like you normally would. But what that's gonna do, it's gonna be great for, I don't know if there's still gonna be mosquitoes, but ticks, you've got ticks to worry about a little bit. So just gives you a little extra peace of mind uh, when you're out there in the woods. I wanna be rolling around in the woods anyway, but you never know. So, so it's permethrin and it, you can get it on Amazon. They'll send you a bottle and you just spray all your stuff with it. Make sure you follow the directions. The stuff's a little bit toxic. Uh, don't let your, uh, I don't know, don't let your dog lick your clothes. That seems like an obvious thing. But. So let me check the list. I've put together a list of all of the items that I'm bringing. I use this checklist whenever I'm packing for a trip like this. Uh, sometimes I'll have things like a big sun hat or whatever, you know. I don't need it for this one, so I don't bring it. But I have a 
checklist of all the things that I look for when I'm going on a landscape photography trip and I'm going to post that up online. If you go to outofchicago.com slash packing list, I'll have everything you need to know. You could download the thing, use it yourself to check it off and uh, hopefully it helps. So places like Boulder Beach have a lot of big rocks, boulders, that can get really slippery. They're underneath the high tide line, so at high tide, they're underneath the water. They've got algae growing on them. Sometimes you don't even see it. They just look like a normal rock, but they're extremely slippery. The only way to get down there is to walk down those rocks. So there are some situations where things get slippery. I've just ordered for myself from Amazon crampons and you put them on the bottom of your boots and they've got spikes in them. I've actually ordered the kind that's meant for like fly fishermen that are going to be walking through rivers. So they're not meant necessarily for uh, if you're going hiking in the mountains and you plan on climbing up the side of a uh, ice cave or something like that. That's not really what they're for. Uh, they're not quite that huge big metal spike into the ground, but they're meant for walking on slippery rocks. So you simply put them on the bottom of your boots and you're going to get a lot more traction when you're walking on those wet rocks. So I'll put the link to the ones that I got down in the description and check them out. Uh, they're like 40, 45 bucks, probably worth it. They're not very heavy. You can just put them in uh, your camera bag or put them with your, your other stuff. And when you're getting to that situation where you may need them, pull them out, put them on the bottom of your boots and away you go. All right, so whether you are joining us in Acadia National Park, going there yourself, or just headed on a general landscape photography adventure, I hope that these uh, ideas helped. Maybe something you can just look over and be like, oh, yep, 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 got it, got it, got it. Oh, I forgot the one little thing. Maybe it was the Allen wrench so that you keep your L-plate tight. Or speaking of that, if you don't use an L-plate, make sure with your tripod that you bring the clamps that go with it. How many times have we done things where people are like, well, I got my camera, I got my tripod, I got the ball head, I got every, oh, I don't have the plate that goes to my camera. If you're a tripod junkie like I am, you really want to get an L-plate and just leave it on your camera all the time. I've never once forgotten my tripod plate because it's always on my camera. So that's what I recommend. Uh, this might be a good chance. If you've never used an L-plate, uh, this is the time to get one and leave it on your camera. Works awesome. I would never buy another camera and not get an L-plate to go with it. Now, when we went to Acadia National Park to scout it, I bought these Neos overshoes and they work great. They go over your boots or over your shoes and you buckle them up and they're waterproof. You can walk into the water up to this deep and they work really, really well. They're easy to pack. They're lightweight. I heard about these from Juan Pons, one of our instructors, and uh, Rick Salmon. They both use these and uh, bring them on any trip where they know they might be going in the mud or the water or whatever it may be. I think that about does it. So if you are headed out on your own adventure, whether you're coming with us to Acadia National Park or you're headed somewhere on your own, I hope that these tips have helped. I've put all of these things, I've put links in the description, but I'm going to put a list of everything that I pack and I'm going to put that on our Out of Chicago site. If you go to outofchicago.com slash packing list, It'll have everything listed there. You can print that out. And as you go through, before you leave, just check, check, check. Got it, got it, got it. Maybe there's that one little thing that you forgot. And hopefully this helps. Make sure you subscribe to Out of Chicago. We're going to have some great videos from Acadia. You're going to love that. And also, if you're interested in joining us for next year, next year we're headed to Moab, Utah to shoot Canyonlands National Park. Arches National Park, Dead Horse Point State Park, and all the surrounding area there. So go to outofchicago.com. You'll find information on signing up for Moab there. It's October 5th through the 9th, 2018, and it's going to be an amazing time. Some of these same photographers are going to be there and uh, new ones as well. So it should be a lot of fun. Learn things in the classroom and go out and shoot those areas uh, during sunrise, at, in the evening and of course going out at night to shoot the Milky Way and to shoot great stuff there. So uh, we hope you can join us. Don't forget you can download uh, this whole thing at outofchicago.com slash packing list.
All right, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on our next adventure.